and say good morning to Quincy Mayor Thomas Koch for our City Hall update. How are you today, Mayor? Doing fine. Good morning, Joe. Good. Beautiful morning. It is indeed. Well, Mother Nature is cooperating nicely for uh, graduation ceremonies this week. Exactly. <laughs> the, uh, it's, it's a lot nicer having it outdoors than if you have to go inside. Correct, yeah. This time of year. We had a full stadium last night. It was uh, really a wonderful evening. Obviously, the weather was gorgeous, but right from the start to finish, the kids were terrific. The speeches by the uh, folks from, and of course, North was last night, Quincy Heights tonight. Uh, they were terrific. The, uh, the band, the, the choir, everything about it was, was just excellent. What is your uh, your sage advice to the class of 2022, Mayor? Well, I spoke a little bit about uh, the word uh, love and how the, need, the world needs that right now with all the going on in the world, across our land, across the world, across the globe. I spoke about uh, Martin Luther King saying, you know, hate cannot drive out hate, only love can do that. And uh, Mother Teresa saying, you know, we can all do, we all cannot do great things, but we can all do things with great love. So those are the themes last night and tonight. Uh, we need uh, we need more of that in this world. The uh, Quincy College commencement was held not too long ago um, as well, and uh, the governor was able to attend. Do you think that had a special meaning for the class? I do. I do. I mean, the, the governor's story is pretty powerful, and and I remember him talking about uh, life is a team sport, you know. Uh, so pick a good team, <laughs> you know. And I don't, mean, I don't think he meant it just to be successful in a sense of making money, but really successful in life, being happy and and having good friends and good people around you. That was excellent. That was a uh, that was a nice honor for the college to have the governor here. Of course, this uh, past weekend was ex- extremely busy in the city with the uh, the band concert on Saturday the uh, Caddy Day Ceremony on Sunday, the Pride Day Ceremony, the Firefighters uh, Memorial's coming up this Sunday. We had the Police Memorial this past Sunday, so just a very, very active time of year here in the city. It is indeed. This time of year is always uh, crazy busy. You know, May and June are uh, a very busy month, uh, only to be topped by September and October usually, so it's, uh, it's all good. It's all good. And of course, the weather's cooperated with every one of them so far. I just hope that continues through Saturday night, Joe. <laughs> Why, Mayor? What's going on on Saturday night? I heard there's a parade maybe Saturday night. <laughs> uh, 71st Annual uh, Flag Day Parade and Fireworks. Is it uh, back to a uh, full 100% uh, Flag Day in Quincy? It sure is. It sure is. The flags are up along the route. I uh, had those up for graduation as well. Uh, but, yes, we got a full roster of uh, band specialty units. It's uh, going to be a nice night. Lieutenant Governor is going to be on as our Grand Marshal. And uh, Marilyn Nesta uh, is being honored with the Coke Award. Uh, she goes way back with my mom and and the other ladies who did so much for young girls uh, playing softball, bowling. Uh, and they're, they're really there. Their whole goal was to build self-esteem, self-esteem in our young, young women. So uh, I hear from a lot of folks my age and older who say what a difference it made for them coming up you know those are different times going back um 50 years ago mm-hmm. women didn't have the same opportunities that they as they do today particularly in sports so it was good stuff and so we're happy to have marilyn with us as the uh, coco wood winner and uh just praying for good weather joe at I this know. point looks uh a little iffy right now but mm-hmm. things could change yeah what what you know it, it's one thing not to have any rain but if we have a low cloud cover that doesn't help us with the fireworks. right <laughs> is there a contingency in case we'll be talking about that this week with the committee okay. um you know i'm hopeful we can pull the whole thing off but uh we'll see fireworks are back at pageant field this year right yeah they yeah, are they're going to be lit off in blacks creek which is uh it's a nice setting i mean when you're on up at pageant for the program uh you feel like you can touch the fireworks they're right above you it's uh, really cool as, uh, and by the way, i yes. got to thank Ian Cork because he's the one that sponsors the fireworks each year. I was going to ask you if he was uh, sponsoring them again this year. So I don't. It's been several years now that he's been doing that. Yes, he's stepped up for a long time. He's a great corporate citizen. Mayor, the uh, City Council uh, last night did formally uh, approve uh, the FY 2023 budget at uh, $372.6 million dollars and uh, representing about a 7% increase. Do you feel it's a responsible budget? That's a leading question, Joe. <laughs> of course I do. <laughs> uh, absolutely. As, as you know, when we went through the COVID, we had we had like a flat year. I mean, typically we were about a 4% increase. But 
because of that, uh, this year is a seven percent kick, um, and I, you know, hopefully next year we'll be back to that. You know, that four percent range is what it's been traditionally what allows us to meet our obligations. So, no, I think it's responsible. Like, just there's a few increases in there. There's the more teachers and staff on the school side because our our class size is thrown off a little bit. So we're addressing that. Uh, there's some additional police officer positions, um, police and fire, but it's. By the time you fill positions, we never seem to be at full complement because there's always retirements of people leaving. And by the time you get somebody, you call for the list, you get them to the academy and all the background check and get them on the street, it's probably close to 18 months, Joe. So it's a long process. So we're hoping that uh, we're bumping this a little bit so we can be at full complement, uh, at least at that 175 to 180 range, even though the budget's about 185. There's always openings. There's always issues that pop up. So. Um, overall, it's, I think it's a healthy budget. I really do. We, I think we do it well in Quincy. The schools are flourishing. Our parks are gorgeous. The library services, senior services, veteran services. You know, 911 response uh, is very, very quick and timely with our police and fire departments. Um, so I, I think it's a very responsible budget and, and addresses the, the needs and values uh, that I think the people of Quincy share. Two councillors uh, did express concern about the amount of debt the city is incurring, given we might be headed for a recession in years ahead. How do you feel about that? Now, that's, you know, it, it's interesting, Joe. When, when we're not investing back into our assets, um, you know, we're looking at a huge liability. And, uh, you know, when we do invest in those liabilities, people squawk that we're spending too much money. I mean, we can't have it both ways. The reality is, you know, we're dealing with infrastructure issues that need to be addressed, whether it's seawalls, whether it's roads, whether it's schools, uh, firehouses, police station. Um, and quite frankly, the debt ratio popped up big because of the pension obligation bond. That, as we discussed a number of times, was huge, looming, unfunded liability that we've dealt with. So, so yes, our, our obligation for debt goes up, but our liability goes down. And, uh, you know, we're looking at one more year of a pretty good bump uh, in the budget because of the pension obligation bump. But after that, uh, it goes fairly flat. And if we had not done anything with this pension obligation bond, then that graph would have gone up consistently uh, at 45 to 50 degree angle, if you can picture that. So, um, again, this is this is a huge savings over time for the taxpayers by doing this. In fact, Joe, we got it just in time before the Fed started to change the rate. In fact, the city of Springfield was looking at this, and they pulled the plug last week because the interest rates had moved just enough to make it not worthwhile. Hmm. So we got it in on time. Uh, our municipal finance team did an extraordinary job pulling this off, and uh, I don't think people will realize the importance of this this move financially for the city and its stability. Very good. Mayor, could I ask you about um, a couple of purchases made with the ARPA funds. I know that that, that uh, information has now been made um, public. It has been public all along, but uh, I had a chance to review it recently. Purchases of properties um, at Southern Artery and Furnace Brook Parkway, the old Verk Rental place, and right. a traffic island, I guess, in West Center and West Street. Yes. What are those yes. properties for? Those were in addition to, as you know, the property on Southern Artery along Town River uh, and also the property that we purchased for future college building in Quincy Center. Mm -hmm. uh, the Verk the property was a tight, um, really ugly commercial spot. <laughs> and when we're doing Southern Artery over, which is in our plans over the next couple of years, uh, there's going to be work done at that intersection. We're going to need a little bit more real estate and allow us to build out what we need for sidewalks and bike lanes mm -hmm. and the proper width there. So we would be cheating into that property, which wouldn't leave a whole lot anyway. Um, so we felt now is the time to grab it. We'll do a nice landscape job. By the way, it's opposite the corner of Marymount Parkway in front of Spook, which is a beautiful spot at Black Creek looking yep. out towards the Atlantic Ocean. So it was really uh, to help embellish that beautiful green stretch and deal with an infrastructure issue on the roads. The other one in West Quincy, that's always been kind of a, a tough spot. It was a house right, right in the middle of that, that island there uh, with a fence right out to the edge of the whole thing. So you got roads going all around it. it. It really was a visibility issue, a safety issue. I think uh, everybody that uh, ever talked about that said, how the heck did the house get built there? 
And the, it's, you know, my guess is the house was there before the roads were done. So, right. Yeah. Uh, we thought that would help clean that area up, open it up, and make it safer for both pedestrians as well as as vehicles. So will that be a, a park setting, or just yes, it just be a, a piece of open space uh, park setting. Correct. Yes. Okay. Very good. Appreciate your explanation of that. Anything else we should no touch problem. on this morning? I think we covered a lot, Joe. We did indeed. Yeah. Yes. We had another good night, so we're looking forward to Quincy High's uh, graduation tonight. I think they've got a few more kids in North. North at about 340. Mm-hmm. I think Quincy's in the 350 range. Okay. Yep. And uh, we will have it live here on QATV as well for folks to enjoy. That's a great service. We appreciate that. You are welcome. Good to talk to you, Mayor. Thank you so much. Thank you, Joe. Bye-bye. It's Mayor Thomas Coke, our weekly City Hall update here on AEM Quincy.